Welcome everyone to the Story Trading Weekly Meetup. We got an action-packed show tonight. We got two presentations, but first a disclaimer, Story Trading is not an investment advisor, neither are any of our guest uh, presenters unless stated otherwise. And investing in securities involves significant risk of loss. This presentation is being recorded. It's gonna be provided exclusively to our VIP members, uh, usually for a period of up to seven days, uh, and then we'll post it up on social media. But first, what's in a story trade? Story trading is the practice of understanding market pricing through the lens of what we call the four pillars of fundamentals, catalyst, sentiment, and technicals. We do that now in our WhatsApp community and in our Zoom meetings here. And uh, we are actually private beta testing our app right now, which will be, will be the place to discover, collaborate, and validate market moving information through crowdsourced research and social collaboration. So make sure to sign up for a wait list so you can be first to try the app when we're ready to allow others on it. Now, uh, the presentations we have on Sunday nights, we typically track them as VIP picks. The first one we're going to have a, a psychedelic stock by Colton Tao coming up here in a couple seconds will be tracked as a VIP pick. Our second presentation tonight uh, will actually not be tracked as a VIP pick right away. We'll get to that. That's GoPro. It's going to be a community collaborative effort to learn more about GoPro and consider it as a VIP pick. So we'll talk about that now in a couple of minutes. Now, uh, we've been getting tons of traffic, tons of people throwing ticker symbols at us all over the place. So we streamlined uh, the process here. If you have a stock that you'd like story trading to consider, uh, that you'd like presented as a VIP pick, please go over to storytrading.com slash submit VIP to get that process started. And we will vet that and uh, see if we can get it into our programming. So uh, we're going to start with the psychedelics. And this got me interested because uh, I missed the whole cannabis trade. And um, you know what? I've learned over the years when something seems like so out there and people start chatting about it and whispering about it, usually I dismiss it, right? Like how many people dismiss crypto? Like, oh, that's weird. That'll never work. People dismiss cannabis. Like, oh, they're going to, some drug is going to become a massive industry. Come on. Now psychedelics, that sounds even crazier. Like what is psychedelics? Isn't that like, illegal street drugs or something like it must be something we got to listen to right so that's why we invited colton tao here maybe we could be early uh before this thing picks up and cannabis gets played out and people want to play the next trend so we thought we'll bring we'll bring him on uh to talk about pharma there it's sticker symbol phrrf this is a very small cap stock 26 million dollar market cap uh 38 cents uh, last trade. Uh, before I turn it over to you, just a couple more slides, Colton. Uh, this is the chart. And our aim through our collaborative research is to understand the price action, understand the history. Why did it go up? Why did it go down? What are those factors that investors care about? And that'll position us to better react and better anticipate uh, what can come next uh, with the stock. So there you have it. We don't have all the answers, but that's the chart we're looking at. These are the four pillars now we talked about sentiment, fundamentals, catalysts, and technicals. So um, I'm going to leave it over to Colton to give us insights on as many of these pillars as he can tonight uh, to get the conversation going. So uh, Colton, over to you. Sounds good. Thank you. I'll go ahead and uh, share my screen. Yeah, let me get back to it. Uh, I think you disabled the uh, screen sharing. Uh, hold on a second. All right. Sorry about that. You are now a co-host. You'll be able to do that. Perfect. Give me one second. Sorry about that. No problem. All right. All right, perfect. So the uh, the investment I will be talking about today is uh, Pharmather, as Ben was mentioning, uh, ticker PHRRF. Um, Pharmather is a clinical stage biotech company that is located out of Vancouver, um, British Columbia. 
that focus on the research, development, and commercialization of novel uses, formulations, and delivery methods of psychedelics to treat mental illnesses, Col neurological. Sorry yeah. to interrupt, Colton. We're seeing all kinds of charts. I, I don't oh. think that's what you want to show us. Oh, yeah. there we go. All right. Yep. Sorry, the screen was uh, going out, but. So their focus um, is to use psychedelics as a prescription. That is their overall main focus. Um, the strategy they're looking to achieve this by is through using um, novel uses, formulations that they create, um, new delivery methods, and overall just new products to basically in this market. So the target markets are mental illness, um, neurological disorders, and pain disorders. Um, so why, so the um, PharmaThir uses is basing their product um, pipeline mainly using ketamine. So the reason for using ketamine is first, it's already been FDA approved for over 50 years since 1970. Um, ketamine in lower doses is an anesthetic used in medical and um, veterinary practices already. And it'll be faster for PharmaThir to get a a product using ketamine onto the market with ketamine already being an FDA approved drug. So many of these other companies that are psychedelics are using psilocybin or LSD or DMT, which are not FDA approved drugs yet. So in that aspect, they already have a leg ahead or a step ahead of everyone else in the game that way. So the four pillars, fundamental sentiment, technicals and catalysts. So right now the fundamentals, as Ben was saying, it's around a 26 million market cap, um, around 38 cents a share. Um, they have about 6 million um, shares outstanding with the 55 million float. Um, the CEO does own Fabio. Um, he does own a majority of the shares with around 16 million. Um, and their cash position is around 11 and a half million. So, it does give them around two years with their monthly burn rate of half a million. And the other, they also have 3.1 million in Revive Therapeutics uh, stock and warrants, which Fabio was also a previous uh, CEO for this company. Um, so some of the sentiment, as I was just talking about Fabio, he serves as the chairman and CEO of uh, PharmaThir and was the former CEO of Revive Therapeutics. Their uh, current CFO, Carmelo Mar Marelli, um, he's currently on 26 different um, companies that are presently, he still uh, has a position in them, mainly as the CFO um, running the financials. And they also have Dr. Owen um, Van Collenberg, who was a former um, principal and research uh, scientist and director at Eli Lilly. So they have a pretty good, um, uh, management team being built and they're also continued to expand it um, and also just overall sentiment of the market with um, as you'll see PSIL it is a psychedelic ETF so as psychedelics become more and more aware and um, the acceptance grows in the market you could see that it is being reciprocated by ETFs coming in and it's not necessarily being shunned out as much. So some of the, the technicals as we're just going over, um, this is another basic graph. I basically just had it um, describing the, I used the simple moving averages and um, the RSI um, to basically provide a technical analysis. Um, so when looking at the, the chart, you could see that price is below the 20, 50 and 200 uh, simple moving average with a pretty low RSI of 36.5. So with that, you can see the chart is forming lower lows, lower highs, and it is developed around a base around um, 35 cents. So it's, I'm looking for that to hold up there. It looks like in the past, it has been a, um, a fairly reasonable support. And after 35 cents, if you were looking for it to go long, I would say the next um, critical area could be around 44 and then after that uh, 53 cents with a final um, interest point at 60 cents. And the reason I put the 60 cents in there is because PharmaThir itself, like the stock has ran past 60 cents and used that as a support. So price in the past has been 
above where it's currently at right now. So some of some of the catalysts that um, we could be looking for in the second half of 2021. So within these last two months in November and December, um, we we're looking for Parkinson's disease, which is F we're looking for the FDA phase two results with ketamine. Um, the depression, which is FDA phase two studies results with ketabet. Um, ALS, which is the IN new, investigational new drug acceptance for phase two study with ketamine. Um, the microneedle patch results for ketamine, um, ketabet, psilocybin, DMT, LSD, and MDMA. So they are not just in ketamine, that is their primary product for their pipelines, but many of their other products are also including other um, psychedelics that are out there. So, and the, the last um, one for second half of 2021 for the catalyst, the manufacturing of proprietary clinic trial supply for ketamine and the microneedle patch, that milestone was achieved this year. So in the, these last two months of 2021, these, uh, the first four bullet points can be um, some catalysts you're looking for to maybe send the stock price, or if you do have a core position, something you could possibly trade around. And in the second half of 2020, we'll be looking at the microneedle patch um, phase one study, the ASL um, results for FDA phase two, the ketamine supply, which is a complete manufacturing for the, um, their pivotal studies, Parkinson's at the end of phase two meeting with FDA and the depression um, end of phase two meeting with FDA for Ketavet. So these are the products. I'll go um, more in depth for each of them. Some of them have a little bit closer timelines or more specific timelines. So I'll stop and point those out for each product. Um, so the micro needle delivery, what makes them unique is that they have two um, basically forms of their micro delivery or the micro needle, needle patch delivery. So the first one is basically for their proprietary formulation, which is ketabet, which is a formulation between ketamine and uh, betaine, which is basically their way of taking out the negative side effects of ketamine and allowing ketamine to basically solve, um, depending on which one it is, but so the, the macro dose MN is for their ketamine and ketabet and for their, and those results will be made in uh, December of 2021. So that will be coming up uh, pretty soon. And they also have another product, which is another form called their micro dose, um, which is patent pending. I also forgot to mention that their macro dose um, uh, patch is patent for the ketamine and ketabet. So, and it's patent pending right now for the other um, biocompatible um, and biodegradable gelatin um, microneedle patch, which is gonna be delivered, used to deliver psilocybin, DMT, LSD, and more specifically, the research results for psilocybin and LSD will be made in November of 2021 and MDMA and DMT results will be in December of 2021. So both of those are coming up pretty frequent or coming up closely. And so the, the whole point of using a microneedle technology is one, it's patient freedom. So the patient doesn't have to be at the, the doctor's office or the, the clinic the entire time constantly getting prescribed to this. It also allows flexible dosing and drug company combinations with continuous delivery. So, and pain-free continuous delivery. So with what their technology is basically using is it's pain-free when it goes onto the skin and it begins to um, basically biodegrade into the skin. So it's not um, basically being punctured and it's an alternative delivery option from oral um, pumps, uh, nasal, and other intravenous or intravenous and other different um, delivery options. So it, it gives uh, base patients uh, a very easy way to um, take these different take this uh, prescription. So the main their one of their main products is the Ketabet, which is the com composition formulation. And basically, they use they design Ketabet to take out the negative side effects in ketamine and to allow ketamine to 
be effective in depression models. Um, it also reduces side effects, the, the side effects from ketamine such as dissociation, um, amnesia and motor dysfunctions and also reduces suicidal thoughts and uh, abuse liability. So with the, um, the ketabed, it is, it'll, when it's given in the microneedle patch, the microneedle patch itself has anti-tampering uh, metrics, which would help uh, reduce with the um, effective or the uh, depression in the, um, when using the ketabed. So uh, a person, or I mean, I'm sorry, not the depression, the abuse liability. So someone cannot, uh, let's say, add more than what they need to their um, microneedle patch. So their main one, they're going after three main um, markets, which is depression, ALS, and Parkinson's. So for ALS, um, ketamine may be capable of stopping or slowing the muscle decline associated with ALS if given in the early stages of uh, muscle decline. So the reason that is so powerful is because there's no uh, cure for ALS. And with the um, ALS, the global treatment market size is expected to reach 478 million by 2027 from 277 million in 2020, which gives it a compound annual growth rate of 8.1%. And in that North America is the largest market with a share of about 60%. So for another, just to um, bring more awareness for ketamine for ALS specifically, um, Pharmather is currently awaiting the IND acceptance for phase two study with uh, ketamine, which is expected in the second half of 2021. So, and the one of their another uh, market they're targeting is Parkinson's. So, with Parkinson's, it is a composition and method for treating motor disorder, motor disorders, and provides pain relief to patients with Parkinson's. And also, like ALS, there is currently no known cure for this disorder. So treatments focus largely on managing the symptoms. So in addition to um, reducing pain and depression, low-dose ketamine infusions could also potentially reduce uh, levoda-induced uh, dyskinesia, which is an involuntary muscle movement um, disorder that comes with the uh, only the main treatment that's used right now for Parkinson's. So not only is Pharmather's um, ketabet could be possibly used for ALS itself, it could also be used to cure the uh, negative side effects that come with the current um, treatments of Parkinson's. So it's, it, could be, um, it could help in two ways there. And so um, just a brief uh, competitors when comparing um, Pharmather to some of the other medical psychedelics companies, I, choose, I chose MindMed, uh, Compass, uh, Midasin, and uh, Atai Life Sciences. Um, the reason I chose a, lot of, uh, a couple of these different um, companies is a lot of them have a much larger market cap compared to Pharma Third in just the general aspect. Along with most of these companies, for example, MindMed, um, or I mean, specifically um, Compass, they are developing a psilocybin formulation. So like how Pharmather is developing a ketamine formulation, Compass is developing a psilocybin formulation. But with that, they're, they're almost narrowing themselves into almost a corner of the psychedelics market, while as Pharmather is open to having products that can deliver for all of these different psychedelics as well as having their own proprietary pipeline of with the uh, ketamine, which they specialize in. So, um, and as you can see also, if you compare the, just the share price as itself, uh, it is fairly um, low compared to the other ones. And I took the, the price to book value, even though as a loan, uh, Pharmather's price to book may look negatively, I believe it is, more being priced in with their um, their pipeline that they have coming due to a lot of different products in um, many different 
kind of sectors of psychedelics, whether it's in formulation, delivery, or just the novel use in general. So I, I and so with comparing them to some of these other companies, um, a lot of them only focus on one or the other, whether it's a delivery or a um, like a formulation there, they're basically trying to figure out. So with that, um, in, in my point of view, it, sh it allows PharmaThird to uh, basically kind of be a step ahead and basically be uh, all over the sector. So they're not, they're exposed to everything. So if uh, the FDA was to deny psilocybin, but approved uh, DMT, Pharmather would still be able to um, profit from that as in having their product with the micro needle patch that can deliver any of those different psychedelics. So um, I can go back, I believe that was mainly the, the end. Um, I can go back for if you guys have any questions or anything I missed. Um, I did go a little quickly, but. Great, thank you. But yeah. Thank you, Colton. Yeah, hang on. I got a bunch of questions for you. Uh, and uh, Jared, feel free to jump in also. And then if anyone has questions in the audience, you can raise your hand and put it in chat. But I'd like you to back up just one second mm -hmm. and, and talk about, you talk about psilocybin, uh, LSD, ketamine. Mm -hmm. What are these, are they related um, biochemically? What makes them a psychedelic? Is it the uh, mechanism of action uh, or is it the actual chemical product? Is it similar? The, uh, the actual chemical. So uh -huh. it depends on um, many of these different companies are trying to ch basically take some parts out. So like I was saying, Compass, for an example, is, is, is creating a uh, formulation for psilocybin 360. Um, many like... Yeah. So, so, so was, is ketamine related, closely related to LSD in terms of its? It, it is. Um, so ketamine is more related in the aspect of the use um, uh -huh. compared to the other drugs where they're more related based on a chemical uh, standpoint. Uh -huh. But, but yeah, so that's why they're also, um, that's what also helps them uh, kind of classify as psychedelics is not only using ketamine as their pipeline, but having a product that can deliver all these other psychedelics as well. But to answer your question, yes, it's, uh, okay. ketamine is more. So, so what do you say? I'm trying to gauge the, the sentiment portion of it a little bit. Yeah. Uh, I, I just heard from a few people, a little bit of buzz around psychedelics and, um, how's like the average, you know, the, the trend traders, you know, that the, they were in cannabis and everything. Is this kind of seen as, you know, the relationship being that, hey, cannabis used to be, you know, an illegal drug that was mm -hmm. legalized, right? And that yeah. jump from illegal to legal opened up this big TAM. And that's where the mm -hmm. sentiment came from. There's this huge new TAM. It's this exciting thing that was illegal, now legal, right? Yeah. So now maybe you have that same, uh, is that same buzz developing over psilocybin and LSD and things like that? And uh and if it is, well, ketamine really, well, you said they have other things besides ketamine, but yeah, let me hear your answer on that one. Yeah, so um, so for the, uh, maybe I could go back in a slide. Um, so for the, uh, the sentiment, um, I do see it uh, basically forming kind of as cannabis did as um, it was kind of shunned away as because it was um, seen as illegal or a drug that maybe not would be able to use medically. Um, but I have been seeing a lot more articles. Um, I read an article recently about the um, basically the, the push to wanting to legalize many of these different uh, psychedelics, basically so that they could be pushed for um, basically pushed for research and study and focus could be kept more on uh, the illicit drugs that can't be taken out and used for um, basically medical purposes or a prescription. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, I got a couple more. Let me just see, Jared, did he have anything for him first? 
Yeah, I had a question. So mm-hmm. first of all, um, if you look at the history of the marijuana sector as an investment, um, one of the trends that you'll notice is that a lot of the companies that got a lot of hype haven't necessarily performed well, even though the industry performed well, because those individual companies have done a lot of dilution. They've done a lot of, um, you know, offerings with, with warrants and stuff like that, that have, have pushed the price down. So I'm looking up this company. I looked them up a little bit as you were talking, they did a, a transaction that you noted that included 15 million of warrants um, two months ago. And then they did another transaction in April where they had another 1 million warrants. Do you know the total number of outstanding warrants for this company? Yeah, I believe I put that on my share. I believe it is uh, 20, 20 okay. and a half million. 20 and a half million. Okay. So here's my question is given that there's 20 and thank, thank you for pulling that up again. Thank mm-hmm. you for, for bringing that up. So given that there's 20 and a half million warrants, do you think that ultimately this company is going to get sort of like bought out does management have a history of sort of successfully spinning off, you know, their companies to, to a big buyer or something like that? Like what's the end game for monetization here? Yeah. So I believe they're, I don't, I'm not too specific if they're looking to necessarily be bought out because they yeah. are, um, they do have the patent for the micro needle patch. So right okay. now they're the only ones with that. Um, and they do have many different uh, partners all working directly for, each of their different causes, but um, the CEO was also the um, CEO for Revive Therapeutics, um, which is specifically for um, psilocybin. But the CFO also, um, he, uh, he's he been with, he's currently with 26 um, companies, also including PharmaThur. And if you look at when he starts most of these companies, he um, never necessarily uh, leaves them. So I have been looking at that as in, it looks like they have a a management team that is being established, um, maybe not for a short term, but for a little bit of a longer term. Um, But yeah, that's what I have to say about that. Uh, I mean, if if you believe that the management is good, that definitely goes a long way in this industry, because I have noticed that a lot of these companies will have like a good product, but they won't necessarily be able to make it work. I, if you have a good management team, that's good at like knowing how to turn a company like this into an actual profitable business. I think that's very important. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um <clears throat> I have a, a couple of questions. Uh, the ETF PSIL Mm-hmm. That my, my app that I'm looking that I look on charts here. Uh, I'm, I only have data from September 16th. Is is that does that sound right? Is that when it started trading? Uh, right when I can get to it. it was the sorry it was it was what part again? No no the uh, ETF PSIL. Oh, yeah, it was just on the sentiment. Yes, sorry. Yes, um, I is do. That, have, when did that start trading? Yeah, that started trading um, around. Oh, whoops. Yeah, that started trading um, around that time. September 16th. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, in September, since September 16th till now, that ETF has been basically flat. It went from like 10 to 875 back to 10. Uh, mm-hmm. During that time, um, this stock PHRF is basically going down by 50%. So uh, I'm wondering if you have any thoughts, if you can pull up the PHRRF chart. Uh, do you have that handy? Yeah. Yeah, let's pull that up. Um, cause th- this stock had a big run up, uh, before P before the ETF started trading, um, it went up like over four times. There you go. So my question is, do you know what caused this big move from like 20 cents to a dollar and then why the relative underperformance, uh, compared to PSIL, uh, since September? Mm-hmm. Um, So in around the uh, 24th, when the uh, first kind of pop was starting to happen on PHRF, um, they did uh, begin masculine trial, or I mean, sorry, they accomplished their clinical uh, research um, and uh, for their ketamine uh, programs. And they also, um, they uh, had Matthew uh, McCulloso join as a scientific and clinical advisor. So that was that back time. in May. Okay. Yeah, that was back in May. Um, compared to the overall, um, like the ETF, how the ETF has been trading compared to PharmaThur. I mean, was um, there what, what was there like a because the PSIL was not trading then? 
So I'm wondering that the entire psychedelic sector, was there a trend trade there when this thing was going up four times in that period? Was it a sector move or was it specific to uh, Pharmather? Um, I believe it was more specific to Pharmather. Um, okay. I can pull up MindMed, which I have followed in, in the past. Um, as you can see around there, it was also kind of trading um, a little bit sideways. Mm -hmm. So compared to right here where it was um, trading, it was uh, having a breakout here. Um, so I don't, I think it was more related to um, the company specifically because they were getting um, updates on their, um, their different products and basically getting approval to go ahead and research uh, many of the different products. So I believe it was more related to the company. However, um, I do believe uh, like the, a lot of these company, these psychedelic companies will trade together as a trend trade. Mm -hmm. So when a lot of them will start to have news to come out, a lot of them will also, like a lot of them will have news release around the same uh, time frame. Um, compared to the ETF, uh, why ETF was trading sideways and Pharmather was trading downwards. Um, I believe it was more related to the company specifically in that um, one Pharmather had their, their warrant um, uh, offering that right. they had out um, and also that they had, um, this was a little bit further, this was last week, they had their um, earnings, which caused um, a bigger drop. Um, but I would say, yeah, it was more company related and more news related that about their uh, warrants. Okay, cool. ETF. Well, yeah, it looks like you got a. Uh, I'm I'm interested in, in looking at this here because it's a, a tiny market cap with a long mm -hmm. runway in, in a sector which potentially can. You know, I like to get in trend trades before they happen. Yeah. Um, so that that's why I'm interested in this. Of of course, it's a, a biotech, so it's highly risky. You don't know what the results of these. Are, and you got mm -hmm. a bunch of catalysts coming up. It, you know, at yeah. the least. And you had mentioned this earlier. Uh, there are trade opportunities, uh, you know, when things are coming up towards the catalyst date. A lot mm -hmm. of times these uh, biotechs do incredibly well in, in the days and, and weeks leading up to some sort of FDA decision. And, yeah. um, you know, everyone's going to have to make their own decision on this in terms of the risk reward. But, you know, we'll be tracking this as a VIP pick from 38 cents uh, from Friday's close. Sounds good. There, All right. Uh... Any other questions you had or? Um, let me see if there's anything else in chat. Um, got a link here. Oh, this is interesting. November 8th, 10th. Oh, wow. That This could be a catalyst. This is interesting. Yeah, there's a link that was thrown up. Uh, let me put it up on my screen. Um, we'll share our screen right here that Joe shared. Uh, there's a largest psychedelic medicine business event ever. So this is, this is cool. I, you know, I, I like this kind of, you know, this again, it reminds me of like cannabis uh, mm -hmm. when it was like starting to become a thing and you're starting to see, you know, activities in the industry indicating a lot of interest. So the largest psychedelic medicine business event ever. And that's this week. So I don't know who's, if they're presenting there or not, but that's something to uh, potentially look at as a, a sentiment tailwind in the stock if you're trading it. Um, so, all right, we'll take a look at this. Thank you very much uh, for the presentation. Colton, if you'd like, you can stick, stick around. Uh, by the way, you, uh, you are in the, uh, we added a PHRRF research group tonight. Uh, you're our community manager, maybe the admin of that group, since you're the expert of PHRF. So you guys can collaborate with Colton in that group on this stock. And uh, we'll good. see. Yeah, we'll see you there. Thank you so much. We have lots of events coming up. Although, man, they're coming in so fast and furious. Our website's not updated at all. Let me tell you what's going on this week. This week, with uh, Jared's help, we started Twitter Spaces. We have a regular schedule three times a week. So it's going to be Mondays at 4 p.m., we're going to go over our VIP trade ideas, which we're about to do in just a second. Then Wednesday night to 8 p.m., we're going to have like philosophical conversations. I can't wait on what's a story trade, how important is sentiment, how, how does sentiment fit into fundamentals, all that kind of stuff. Uh, that, that stuff I just love. I can't wait to talk to the world about that. Wednesdays at 8 p.m. 
And then every Sunday night at 8 p.m., right before our VIP show, we'll be on Twitter Spaces to discuss uh, what went on in story trading for the past week, mostly for the people who are not VIP members. In addition, this Friday at 10 a.m., we're interviewing the CEO of Fun, P-H-U-N. It is not a VIP pick, but there's a lot of interest in that stock. Fun is reporting earnings like 5 p.m. Thursday night, the night before. So we got the CEO of Fun to jump on Twitter spaces with us um, at 10 a.m. the next morning. And then I believe next Sunday night, we have a VIP pick presentation on Matterport, MTTR. Another, that's a metaverse stock. A lot of, uh, you know, interest around that stock and that sector. So tons of events going on. Uh, maybe we can get caught up with our website listings. But if you're a VIP member, you'll always know what's going on. So um, definitely, you know, follow us on YouTube and on Twitter. We ran really late today. Sorry about that, guys. But we're going to now move on to Trade of the Week. So stick around. <laughs> 